This is the new Honda Prelude concept car. A lot of people are really stoked about this thing, myself included, and today we are gonna talk all about it. Plus, all the best and worst cars coming out in 2024. There's a ton of them. Welcome to Donut. All right, Nolan, first things first, most important part, how does it look? It looks great. I really like Very how it looks. slick, like a fish, cuts through the air. <laughs> you know what's fast? Fish. Carbon fiber spoiler, carbon fiber roof and mirrors. This thing supposedly will be a hybrid, maybe like a two liter powertrain in there. And this thing comes in between $31,000 and $38,000, which I think is the sweet spot. Dude, I really like this a lot. I can totally see this like rolling with the crew. You got a Civic Si, you got a Prelude, just like the old days. Pretty I'm sweet. old enough now that stuff I used to like is like coming back as retro and new. So Nolan, are you stoked for the future or are we doomed? Hmm, James, let me think about that. Done. I'm stoked <laughs> as hell for the Prelude concept. This thing's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I love the direction the Honda's going. And that's not even our favorite car coming out in 2024. But first, let's take a look at the cheapest car on the list, the Volkswagen ID Buzz. We've been hearing about it for years. Dude, it's here. One of the first videos that I made on the channel. Oh, dude, we're back when you were doing Donut News. Yeah, this is one of the first cars that we ever covered. It's the Volkswagen ID Buzz, the electric panel van. That was like 2017. That was a long time ago, yeah. and here, here it is. Amazed that it's actually here. <laughs> right? I didn't think they'd actually this, make one. I mean, dude, as far as a family car goes, like this is pretty. I cool. think people would be more open to minivans and all that kind of stuff if they look like this. Now this thing is estimated to start at around forty thousand dollars. It's built on the modular electric drive or MEB platform, shared with the Audi Q4 e-tron and Volkswagen ID4. This thing's got 282 horsepower for the single motor or 330 horsepower from the twin motor version. Ooh. It also comes with an 86 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for about 280 miles of range. Minivans really lend themselves to EV design because, you know, most of them use kind of like the skateboard design where the battery is part of the floor. And if you look, I mean, it's totally flat. The battery is living under there. It's not getting in the way of the practicality. The doors are enormous. It's probably super easy to get in there. Yeah, we've been walking around this convention hall for a while and people are as excited about this thing as anything else that we've seen yeah. so far. So oh. Nolan, are you stoked for the future or are we doomed? I'm actually really, really I'm stoked, stoked on this thing. Future. Stoked for the future. I can't of wait the to see balloon arrangement company <laughs> livery on the side of this bad boy. This thing is the cheapest car on the list. Oh. It's only gonna get more expensive. And the best part of this whole list is that we're actually gonna drive a bunch of these cars, including this next one. Oh. Big thanks to Subaru for sponsoring today's video. This is a 2024 Crosstrek Sport. Crosstrek is already known for being an outdoorsy crossover for outdoorsy people, but Crosstrek is also a great daily driver. The base Crosstrek comes with a fuel-efficient 2.0-liter Subaru Boxer engine making 152 horsepower, but the Sport that I'm driving has an upgraded 2.5-liter making 182 horsepower. More horses means more better, if you ask me. The Crosstrek also comes standard with Subaru EyeSight Driver Assist technology. It's packed with safety features like advanced adaptive cruise control and even pre-collision braking. Let's get out of this city, yeah? While it's not a dedicated off-roader, the Crosstrek can certainly handle going off-road thanks to 8.7 inches of ground clearance and Subaru's standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Add on dual-function X mode with hill descent control, and you'll get even more traction in more difficult conditions. Ah, <sighs> just look at that view. Not the mountains, this interior. It's over 120 cubic feet of total interior space, plenty of room for weekend road trips or off-road trips. It's also got an optional 11.6 inch touchscreen multimedia system compatible with available Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and there's a convenient wireless charging spot. On the exterior, I really like these raised roof rails, perfect for kayaks and outdoorsy stuff. These actually come standard on all trims above the base model, and in the rear, Subaru even included a step for easy access to the roof rails, which is a nice touch. So, who is the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek 4? Well, I'd say it's for someone looking for a dependable daily driver that can also tackle some weekend adventures. 
It's practical, comfortable, and even at the base level, it's packed with some great features. To learn more, just click the link below. All right, 2024 Nissan Z Nismo. The best trim level. The Nismo does not disappoint. Like there's nothing wrong with the regular performance Z, but like the Nismo feels Porsche level exciting wow. inside. It's very, very nice. I love the Recaro seats. I love all the little trim bits. This color is so sick. This is Nissan putting their best foot forward when it comes to the Z. It's the flagship sports car with the GTR kind of on its way out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, setting the pace for the brand. Uh, it's got 420 horsepower, 20 more than the normal Z, which like isn't a ton, but I think you can definitely feel it. And I think this is like truly a Z. You know, it looks like a Z. It has the same like seating position. You're way far in the mm -hmm. back of the car. Yeah. It's like you're being pulled by a chariot. Yeah. I feel like a personal connection, you and I together with this car. You know, we yeah. did Hilo with the 350Zs. For years, we were begging Nissan to bring back the Z in one form or another. And finally, Nissan Z was announced. And it just, you know, full circle. All right, so let me switch the, to racing mode. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, way I feel that, right? yeah. yeah. Way heavier steering. And people are giving it a lot of crap to the fact that this thing isn't available in a manual. But <laughs> sure, it's fun rowing through gears, but automatic transmissions are so this good so right much now. Faster. This thing is so much faster than a manual yeah. version. Getting to the point where it's like, oh, they don't make it with manual windows. <laughs> Sounds really good. I would 100% drive this every day in a heartbeat. This thing's $66,000, theoretically. Of course, dealers are gonna mark it up because. <laughs> so are we stoked for the future or doomed? I'd Damn. say, based on the car, I'm stoked for the future. Based on all these pieces of trash marking cars up so much, we're doomed. It's our fault. The next car on this list might be the most unique car coming out in 2024. The new Myers Manx 2.0 comes out almost 60 years after the original debuted James, but this time as an EV tribute to the original car. Back in the 60s, this guy named Bruce Myers made a kick and turned your Volkswagen Beetle into a little doom donkey. <laughs> doom donkey. The new one carries that same spirit, except now it's all electric. That thing looks cool as hell. I love it. Like, they didn't reinvent the wheel here. This is a really great example of doing retrofuturism well. Like, everything good from the old one, but applied with, like, new technology. The thing looks sick. It looks awesome. It makes 202 horsepower in the two-motor version. It does 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds. It has a supposed 300-mile range from a 40-kilowatt-hour battery. It's a lot of dunes, bro. Yeah. and It's a lot of dunes. That would mean, James, that it's a lot more efficient than, like, most EVs on the market. And way cuter. This thing starts at $74,000. Oh, that's that's a, lot. a lot of money. That's more than that. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like you're spending, I mean, dude, this was like a cheap, affordable kit car. It was car. a kit car, yeah. Your donor car is a VW, a Beetle. Yeah. This thing is very expensive and like almost <sighs> cosplaying that kind of lifestyle. Yeah, well, I think they're like probably aiming to sell this thing to people who maybe owned original Myers Manxes and now they have a lot more income. Or yuppies who want to emulate that. Right. Yeah. If they said this is 35 grand, it's like, uh, Sign me up, yeah. but obviously that's just not tenable. I don't think we're doomed. I'm still stoked for the future, but that's really expensive. It's really expensive. This one's awesome. Next up is another company that understands off-roading very, very well. I'm talking about a little company from Japan called Toyota. Oh. Whoa! TRD, Toyota Racing Got Development. Got the huff all over print, baby. maybe. Available at Zoomies. You know what else is available at Zoomies? Donut apparel and accessories available at every Zoomies in North America or Blue Tomato in Europe. So Toyota and Lexus, same company, <laughs> offer an insane <laughs> seven- Little did you know, little little did you know fact uh, with that. Little little fact, uh, Toyota and Lexus are the same company. They have 17 different models of SUVs and crossovers. That's insane. Starting oh. with one of the most exciting vehicles of the year, the 2024 Lexus GX 550. We were really excited when photos of this thing showed up on the internet and in person. I gotta say, 
it delivers. It's sweet, dude. dude. The thing's got real zaddy vibes. Yeah, uh, it really fits my personality. I'm really excited that we're moving back towards like boxy styling. Yeah. I like this a lot. It looks really good. He's got a 3.4 liter twin turbo V6, making 349 hertz per and 479 pound fleets of twerk. Full time all wheel drive, our center and rear locking dips. Oh. It's got a multi terrain select system for off roading. Cool. Which I assume is like snow, mud, rocks. Alters the way the car. Moss. I'm navigates. assuming there's a moss in there. Oh, moss. Uh, uh, lava. Lava terrain. Yeah. Candy land. <laughs> and flesh. You can hold seven passengers. It's got 33 inch tires, standard. It is also $75,000. So it's either this or a Myers Bank 2.0. <laughs> I think I'd, I'm taking this. I'm stoked. This I'm one. stoked, but I feel like this could get you through anywhere the world is doomed. You know what I mean? Right, even if the world is doomed, I'm stoked to have this car. Yeah. I want more cars to be like all squared off like this. I hope this is a sign of what's to come. Well, we got the Toyota version. Oh yeah. Um, Land Cruiser, that'll be very boxy as well. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned the Land Cruiser because that's our next car. I didn't even mean to do that. The Land Cruiser shares the same platform as the GX. It's a really good off-roading platform. Everybody sure. loves platform. making one little platform and putting all their crap on Saves it. Saves a lot of money. So there are a few differences though between the Land Cruiser and the GX. The Land Cruiser is 3.3 inches shorter and rides lower than the GX, surprisingly. Oh. The Land Cruiser also comes with a 2.4 liter hybrid engine that makes 326 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds of torque. It makes as, almost as much power as the GX does Whoa. with its twin turbo v6 the land cruiser will start in the mid 50,000 range that's tight yeah so i'm sure the markups will be insane yeah definitely but hopefully they can pump these things out keep that inflation down a little bit i'm hyped for the future this thing seems awesome but toyota isn't the only company that went suv crazy there are a crap ton of ev suvs coming out this year and me and james are going to try to guess what they are based on the pictures alone that we have right here. I'm gonna say right now, that's an Acura. That's an Acura. Is this MDX. A, I'm gonna say MDX as well, yeah, because that's the only SUV I know. Is that an MDX? MDX is still gas. This oh. is an Acura ZDX. EDX. ZDX. ZDX. Mm. ZDX. <laughs> Get in ZDX. Next up, that's, that's a, a Toyota. Toyota. That's the Crown. Is that a Crown? No. The Rav Z. <laughs> Toyota. BZ5X. BZ5X. This I, one's I, dumb looking I, right here. I don't like it. Yeah. Looks like a GTA 5 car. There is no reason for someone to own a car that looks like that. Next up, we know what that is. That's a Volvo. I like it. Yeah, I love that. I'm not sure what, what's called. It looks like a helmet from the cops in Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah, it does. XCE70. Yeah. XCE70. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Volvo EX30. EX30. Oh, that means it's a little boy. I don't love it. Uh, all right, mystery EV number four. Uh, oh. That's a. Uh, oh, is that an Audi or a Volkswagen? No. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess Hyundai on this one. Or is that a Honda? No, all these things look the same to me. They all. Look they the just same. Have, they, they just have different headlights. Similar, yeah. I don't know what it is based on that. Is it a Hyundai? That's the Toyota BZ3X. Oh <laughs> goddamn. <laughs> They're not helping us out. No. I, who can keep track of all this stuff? To be honest, I, I don't know who really needs a car like this. Like it, it's a normal just, person? A person who needs to transport their kids but doesn't need two locking diffs. Yeah, that's true. But the GX is way cooler. The GX is way cooler. It's because we're car dudes, dude. Yeah. We're built different, okay? I'm not super stoked about the future. I'm not feeling these. Yeah. I'm feeling doomed. I don't like it. Okay. Finally, some expensive stuff. We got the Polestar 5. This thing doesn't have a rear window. Really? Yeah. It's made to compete with the Taycan, which is one of my favorite cars. Mm -hmm. 884 horsepower. It's got racing seats in the back. Estimated to start around 100 Which is less than a Taycan. Yeah, yeah it is. This thing rolls. It looks like iRobot. It's fucking yeah, sick. That's cool. but I'm probably most stoked for the future. This is the most future one. It's very futuristic. Stoked for the it's future. It's not 2024. It's 3024 with this one, where we're just blobs of jelly, consciously moving around the plumbing system of existence. Coming up are some of the best and last internal combustion engines that might ever exist, but also some of the highest prices for production cars ever. First though, let's check out the next car on the list. 
Oh, Nolan, I think I might hear a hybrid. Oh, that must be the 2024 Chevrolet Corvette E-Ray. Well, I know what you might be thinking. Oh, guys, it looks just like a C8 Corvette. But if you think that, you're wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's got a different front bumper. It's got a lot of color matched elements on this one. Normally, you know, there's a lot of blackout things make it look more sporty and aggressive. This has like elements that pop out. They gave us an interesting spec, I think. They did. I think they gave us the My Dad spec. Yes. We got maroon on chrome. And open that door, James. Let's yeah, see that Yeah, this interior. is the best part. It's got a GM gray interior. I didn't know they made leather this color anymore. This is the Corvette of all Corvettes right Yeah, here. this is the most Corvette spec possible. All right, let's take it for a drive. Let's see how weird things are in 2024. So this thing with the hybrid drivetrain is zero to 60 in two and a half seconds. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this, thing's this thing's fast, dude. So fast, the G-Force forced my hand back and I shifted. <laughs> the E-Ray is available at prices between 106K and 124K. This thing's fully loaded, so it's a little over $124,000. This thing is fast, though. It's like not oh, even full that thing sounds amazing, too. Yeah, dude, this is a hybrid. Yeah. Let's talk about that for yeah, a second. Yeah, because we've say, we're have we saying hybrid, and you're thinking one thing probably, yeah. but... I was very surprised to learn that there's actually no physical connection, even wiring, between the engine and the battery that's sitting right here. It's charged completely by the front wheels under braking, or if you're kind of like in traffic or cruising along, it'll use regenerative braking while you're moving to charge the battery. GM designed this thing to be able to capture energy and dispense it extremely quickly. It doesn't have a very big capacity. If you go full electric, you can drive about four miles on this thing. Yeah. But you can go up to 45 miles an hour. Yeah, so Chevy wasn't like, hey, let's make a hybrid Corvette. No. Right? In, in fact, being hybrid wasn't the uh, spark that inspired this car. The reason that it's hybrid is because they wanted to make an all-wheel drive Corvette. Yeah, you know, something that can be driven in all sorts of weather. You know, there's places where it snows, where it rains a lot, and something like a 500 horsepower supercar, 600 horsepower With an engine in the back. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of hairy to drive. So give your customers more confidence, and the best way to do that was to give the front wheels power from electricity. I, I love this. It really is just like a great driving experience. I love cars that are extremely capable if you put them on the track or in the canyon somewhere, but then are also not intimidating at all to drive in traffic, you right. know? Get you a car that can do both. <laughs> Stuff for the future. Me too. Yeah, I think I could live with the $124,000 hybrid supercar. Yeah, I think I could do that. I think I could do that. But what is the E-Ray even competing with, if anything at all? Well, I think we're about to find out. This one's technically a bit of a cheat, James, because it came out 2023. But the Dark Horse puts out 500 horsepower. It's got six piston Brembo brakes up front. It's got Magnaride suspension, and it costs about twice the base level Mustang. But the car we are actually talking about while we're driving this thing is 10 times the amount of a base Mustang, oh. the Mustang GTD. Oh. That's about as cool as our job gets. Yeah. <laughs> I think it sounds nasty. <laughs> the internet went crazy at the end of 2023 with the debut of the 2024 Ford Mustang GTD. A truly insane car, especially yes. from someone like Ford. Really a GT4 car for the street. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool seeing Ford take after Porsche with their GT3 car. Uh -huh. uh, McLaren has one that you can buy. And they're making between 1,000 and 2,000 of them, so. So we have a chance to get one. We have a chance to get one. So if you have $300,000 plus what I'm sure is a lot of markups, oh, man. Uh, you can get your hands on a street legal Ford race car. That's so much for a Mustang. Dude. That, yeah, that's but what do you get for $300,000? Well, you get an 800 horsepower, 5.2 liter V8. Okay. You get cantilever rear suspension. Okay. You get magnesium wheels. Okay. <laughs> you get a DRS system. <laughs> That's awesome. And in the front, there are carbon fiber flaps that are hydraulically Dude, actuated. That's sick. 
Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah, so when you enter into sport mode in the GTD, the car lowers itself and you gain between 15 and 20 miles per hour on your top speed. Oh my God. That's dude, so it's cool. like an X-Wing just going. <laughs> That's so weird, James. That's weird, dude. Cars are getting so weird in 2024. If by weird you mean sick, GTD, gosh dang, that's so cool. So freaking stoked for the future. So uh, yeah, stoked, this thing is very cool. sick. All right, we only got three cars left and they're crazy expensive. Next up is a new John from one of the premier hypercar builders in the world. I'm talking about McLaren 750S. It's basically a lighter restyled 720S. It's got 740 horsepower from a twin turbo V8, seven speed dual clutch. Cool. Lightest ever wheels McLaren has ever made. It weighs 3,100 pounds. That's zero unreal. to 60 in 2.5 seconds. Quarter mile in 9.9 .9 seconds. Nice, dude. And it costs just a little over $329,000. <laughs> I've always loved the 720. If I became very wealthy overnight, mm -hmm. that'd be like my supercar of choice, I think. It looks like a spaceship. Yeah. Uh, very, very cool looking. And this is even better. Yeah, this thing's cool. Stoked. This next car on the list is the one and only Cadillac Celestique. This ultra luxury EV is going after the highest European luxury car brands in the world with a ton of new innovations. I think it looks incredible. It looks awesome. It's got a 55 inch wide digital dashboard. I love. And those seats look like fresh salmon. So who can think about that? <laughs> it's hand built one by one according to custom orders. Okay, so we're gonna probably see some really ugly ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's 600 horsepower, it's probably dual motor. Also has rear wheel steering to help you to steer that big honker through the Erewhon parking lot. And it has an estimated price of $340,000. Really swinging for the fences, Cadillac. I actually love that though. Yeah. Because Cadillac, you know, in the 50s and 60s, yeah. that was like the, the fanciest like, car on the planet. Short of Rolls Royce, yeah, you know? And I love to see Cadillac coming back to that yeah. and being like, we're gonna give you that. Yeah, who's to say an American car shouldn't be as luxurious as anything else? We're the luxurious people. I'm so stoked. I'm very stoked for this. Yeah, I want to drive one of these. All right, so we have made it to the final car on our list of new cars in 2024, and it is a big daddy fill of a car. Last car on this list and most expensive, the Rolls Royce Spectre EV. That's dope. Looks like a Rolls Royce. It's got two motors that make 577 horsepower, 260 mile range. This thing weighs 6,559 pounds, but it still goes zero to 60 in 4.2 seconds. That's so crazy. It's like, hey, fighter jets are heavy. Luxury cars should be electric, you know, because it's yeah. just so smooth. Yeah, you, you want it to be quiet. You know, you won't spill your uh, fancy drink. And this is the most expensive car on this list at $423,000. And guess what? Ooh. I hope my future includes one of these because I'll be stoked. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to see us drive and learn more about any of these cars, let us know down in the comments. Speaking of EVs, we just raced a Model 3 against a GT3 RS. If you want to see that, check out this video. Uh, again, go to Zoomies, buy some donuts stuff. I love you.